for this fourth generation HIV testing for antigen and antibody I'd like you to be aware of how the kit is set up in particular so the kit has a couple component uh, parts to it when it comes to finding out whether or not somebody has been exposed to HIV and uh, subsequently produces antibody or if they've been exposed to HIV and are actively replicating the virus in which case they would be producing antigen as well. So you can see on the um, key here we have on the left hand side a reactive component for the HIV antibody all the way at the left in the middle for the reactive we see a antigen component and then to the right there is the reactive antigen and antibody component in the middle we see a non-reactive specimen all that's being indicated is way at the top. You see the control is positive, meaning the tests work correctly, but <clears throat> there is no antigen and no antibody present for that particular specimen. Again, oops. Again, this specimen is going to detect both antigen and antibody. Um, and the results will take about 30 minutes to pick up these results. Now this particular test is <clears throat> the fourth generation test that's put out um, by the um, company called Alira. Um, this is a HIV 1 and 2 antigen antibody combination test and you'll be able to get this information in product literature online so that you can do your lab report about how this works. But let's see how it works with some specimens and then um, we'll have our data set for you to write on. So the first part of the data set that I'd like you to look at is two samples here initially. So we have these two samples. The one sample, remember the controls are all the way up at the top. Put the specimen in all the way at the bottom here. Capillary action lets this flow. As it flows, if the um, specimen has antigen or antibody in it, it will be captured and detected. So if you notice on the um, picture on the left. Let me see if I can zoom this in anymore. On the left is our specimen that's going to be detecting whether or not we have antibody at the bottom, which it does. And then on the right, Instead of detecting antibody, we're detecting antigen. So one of these has antibody. We'll call that specimen number one. What does that mean in terms of the process for this patient? Specimen number two has antigen in it. And the idea then is what does that mean about the patient's status? So we have number one, positive for antibody. Specimen number two, positive for antigen. Both are valid because the controls are also present. 